Have the media gone totally woke, and is that twisting their coverage? Ted Cruz is the author of the new book, Unwoke, How to Defeat Cultural Marxism in America. I sat down with the Texas studio, Texas senator, excuse me, here in Studio 2. Ted Cruz, welcome. Howard, good to be with you. Senator, you write in the book that if younger journalists had any doubts about whether inaccurate Trump stories were true, they chased them away by convincing themselves this was noble work. Donald Trump, a literal fascist in their eyes, simply could not remain in power. And I largely agree with that. But then you say that's the same excuse that Marxist revolutionaries throughout history have used to justify the monstrous crimes of the regimes they serve. Monstrous crimes sounds a bit over the top. Well, it's not remotely over the top that Marxist regimes have committed horrific crimes, whether, you're whether it is. To American journalists. Well, that's right. And, and the name of the book, as you know, is Unwoke How to Defeat Cultural Marxism in America. And, and what the book does, every chapter focuses on a different institution that the radical left has taken over. So it starts with universities, it goes from there to K, K through 12, it goes from there to journalism, yep. then government, then big, big business, business, then big tech, then entertainment, and finally science. So on journalism, look, you know well, Howard, the world of journalism has changed dramatically. Radically. And it's changed dramatically in the last seven years. Um, when I was first elected to the Senate, it was 2012, 11 years ago. At the time, look, journalists, Journalism has always been biased, but, but let's take CNN, and I focus a lot on CNN yeah. in this book. Try to give the appearance of fairness. And in 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, CNN reporters envisioned what they were doing as trying to be fair and even-handed. You'd have arguments. And now? And now Trump broke them. They hate Trump so much. I don't believe they view their mission as let's be even-handed, let's mm -hmm. have both sides on, let's be fair and objective. I think they view their mission is as propagandists. When they say, we're here to save democracy, and by that they mean elect Democrats, <laughs> they're, they're no longer interested. You know, CNN now will have a panel of five, all of whom are there to discuss how horrible Donald Trump is. Including, That's no longer news. former Republicans. From the book, the Democratic Party is now controlled by cultural Marxists. Seems to me Joe Biden got elected as a more moderate candidate, yep. certainly, than Elizabeth Warren or uh, Bernie Sanders. And he's moved left. But has he moved into Marxist territory? So he has. And, and let me be clear. When I'm talking about the Democratic Party there, I'm not talking about Democrat voters. I don't think the American people embrace the views of cultural Marxism. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the people that run this administration, the people that run this White House. What you pointed to is one of the most surprising things. You're right. Joe Biden in 2020 ran as something of a moderate. He hearkened back to the kinder, gentler years of yesteryear. And bipartisanship. And, yeah, yeah. And that was an attractive vision. Now, now he scrapped it literally the day he was sworn in. I remember sitting there listening to his inauguration speech, which was a hard, charging speech attacking all of his enemies. And, and, and he's governed that way ever since. Now, I get asked all the time, who's really running things at the White House? Because I don't think it's Joe Biden. Very few other people do either. Let me what is clear is in this administration, they have given the agenda to the radicals. Let's take the fight right now over Ukraine funding, Israel funding, and open borders. I do a podcast every week, Verdict with Ted Cruz. Today's podcast does a deep dive as to why this bill is completely dead right now. And the reason is the Democrats care more about keeping open borders than they do about Ukraine. And they're willing to sacrifice the Ukraine funding, which they insist is saving democracy as well. That's their favorite new talking point. But open borders, they're more committed to 9.6 million people crossing illegally because they want to change the electorate and stay in power. That's what Marxists do, is they put decisions in place to hold on to power. Fascinating phrase in the book, Marxism survives only in darkness. Yeah. Seems to me that these hot-button cultural issues are debated all the time on cable news and elsewhere, regardless of which side you're on. Well, it depends which cable news you're talking about. Yes on Fox. Yeah. Turn on MSNBC. They don't talk about them. Turn on CNN. They don't talk about them. Look, when I, this book, Unwoke, lays out a positive, proactive battle plan for how we take these institutions back. And, and, and it focuses— You say you need to regain the country. Yes. But Republicans control the House. Conservatives control the Supreme Court. Uh, I mean, was cultural Marxism a problem during the Trump years? Yes. Yes, it absolutely was. Mm -hmm. And part of it, you look at the deep state where the federal government waged war— 
on the president of the United States, the Department of Justice, the FBI, the intelligence agencies. From the very beginning, they wanted the Trump presidency to fail, and they were willing to abuse government power to attack him from within. And I talk about that at, at considerable length in the book, how the deep state was weaponized, the weaponization of the Department of Justice, because those indictments are as blatant an assault on democracy as we've ever seen in our country's history. Why have they indicted him over and over and over again? Because they're afraid of democracy. They think, holy crap, if the voters get to decide, they might vote for this guy. So we got to do everything we can to prevent that. You say for conservatives are big bucks, buy a damn movie studio, yeah. buy a network, buy CNN. Yes. Fine. We need more cultural uh, diversity, ideological diversity, yeah. I should say. But do you think that mega corporations that uh, these outlets, uh, that own these outlets, are run by wild eyed liberals? Well, for whatever reason, yes. And MSNBC is a rabidly partisan, dishonest institution. They're not, they don't cover news. You know. Sure, they cover news. All right, let's take, for example. Not, not the way you like. No, they don't. No, no, they don't. And I'm going to give you an example. Three weeks ago, I and several other senators forced a vote on the Senate floor on emergency military funding for Israel mm -hmm. because Joe Biden and Chuck Schumer holding Israel funding hostage for the rest of their political priorities. They're we trying forced to do a, a bigger package. So, yeah. but we forced a vote on the bill the House had passed. You know who didn't cover it? CNN, MSNBC, The Washington Post, The New York Times. It simply didn't exist. They literally had come from an Israel march to go to the Senate floor and vote against emergency military funding for Israel. And the reason is the corrupt corporate media covers it up and hides it. If you watch CNN, MSNBC, there is no border crisis. Doesn't exist. Because they don't cover on those facts. They cover it at times. And the corruption of the media is why, a big part of the reason why Democrats in Congress and the administration are so radical. I can tell you feel strongly about it. I, I would add that I'm not entirely convinced that all these indictments are purely political in nature, but I know you do. Let me ask you close with this. Unwoke is a great title. I'd suggest the word woke is so overused by so many different people and factions that it's essentially lost its meaning. Well, yes and no. Look, people understand it, and they don't like it. They understand it, it, it is about censorship. It is about canceling people. It is about silencing people. And I do want to mention to your viewers, it's been a bestseller. People, it's interesting. It's fun. And Christmas is right around the corner. It makes a fantastic Christmas gift. All politicians are salesmen. <laughs> Senator Ted Cruz, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.